Welcome to the Pisa for Schools tutorial on how to understand your school report. This tutorial will help you read and interpret your school report. If you are watching this, your school has probably taken the PISA-based test for schools, or the OECD test for schools, as it is known in the United States. You will have received your school report, which includes a comprehensive analysis of your students' performance in reading, science, and mathematics, and an analysis of the teaching and learning environments in your school. This data is displayed in a series of charts and figures. When reading a PISA for Schools report for the first time, you may encounter unfamiliar statistical concepts and figures. Don't worry, in the next 20 minutes, we will walk you through some key figures in the report. You will be able to download the presentation from this tutorial and the transcript in the PISA for Schools Community Library. If you want to dig deeper into statistical concepts and figures used in the report, you can refer to the reader's guide that accompanies your original school report. A variety of figures and tables are used to show your school's results. While there are over 40 different figures in the report, they can be classified into six major types. In today's tutorial, we will discuss the following figures, which are good examples of each of these six main types. Figure 3.1, student performance in reading, mathematics, and science. Figure 3.5, student proficiency levels in reading, mathematics, and science. Figure 3.6, student performance in reading, mathematics, and science among girls and boys. Figure 3.9, how your school's results in reading compare with schools in your country in PISA 2018. Figure 4.1, motivation for learning. Figure 5.1, social and emotional skills in each of the big five dimensions. Finally, we will make some suggestions on what follow-up actions you could take next. Throughout the presentation, we will refer to School Z, a fictitious school that took part in the PISA-based test for schools last year from Country Z, also a fictitious country. In your school report, School Z refers to your school and Country Z refers to your school's country. Chapter 3 provides an overview of your school's performance on the PISA-based test for schools. It focuses on the performance of different groups of students in your school and the kinds of tasks that they can perform in each domain. In figure 3.1, you can see your school's results in reading, mathematics, and science. The vertical y-axis shows scores on the PISA scale. The higher the value, the better the result. Because the PISA-based test for school uses the same framework as the Program for International Student Assessment, known as PISA, we can compare the score obtained by schools to those obtained by countries. The green hexagon represents the performance of School Z on the PISA scale. The red dot here represents the score of Country Z in PISA 2018. The blue dot represents the average performance of OECD countries in PISA 2018. You can also see a semi-transparent green stripe with a caption that reads 95% confidence interval. This indicates the extent to which the difference between the performance of your school and your country, or the average of OECD countries, is statistically different or not. If the difference is statistically different, the red dot and or the blue dot will appear outside the green stripe. If it is not, the dots will appear inside. Why is this important? Because if it is statistically different, you can conclude that the difference in performance between your school and your country, or OECD countries, is real. If it is not, then the difference could be due to noise or random variation. In this case, any conclusions about the difference should be treated with caution. Now let's take a closer look at School Z's performance in the three domains. In reading, School Z scored 540 points on the PISA scale, while Country Z scored 580 points, and OECD countries scored an average of 487 points. Both the red and the blue dots appear outside the green stripe. So we can conclude that Country Z scored statistically significantly better than School Z, and School Z scored statistically better than OECD countries. However, on some occasions, for statistical reasons, exceptions may arise. You can always refer to the table below the figure which states clearly if the differences are statistically significantly different or not. For School Z's performance in mathematics, the red dot is outside of the green stripe while the blue dot is inside. So this means that School Z's performance is similar to that of OECD countries and is statistically lower than Country Z. In science, School Z had a similar performance to Country Z and OECD countries. 
In addition to a simple PISA score, we can look at your school's performance in terms of the percentage of students that score at each proficiency level. Student performance on the PISA scales can be divided into proficiency levels that define what students are expected to know and be able to do. Each proficiency level in reading, mathematics and science represents a specific level of student ability based on the tasks that students at this level can complete from the highest performing students, level six, to the lowest performing ones below level two. Level two is used as a reference and baseline as it represents the level of proficiency at which students begin to demonstrate the competencies that will enable them to participate effectively and productively in life as continuing students, workers, and citizens. In the school report, students are grouped into top levels corresponding to PISA levels five and six, which means they are well on their way to becoming the highly skilled knowledge workers of tomorrow. Intermediate levels corresponding to PISA levels two, three, and four, which include students who can demonstrate skills and competencies that will allow them to participate productively in life as they continue their studies and enter the labor force. And those who fall below the baseline PISA level two and who are at risk of poor educational and labor market outcomes. Figure 3.5 shows the comparison between school Z, country Z, and the OECD average. The bold line indicates the baseline level two. The value on the left hand side indicates the percentage of students that did not achieve level two. Take reading as an example. In school Z, only 10% of its students fall below the baseline level, compared to 30% at the country level in country Z and 22.6% among OECD countries on average. Likewise, on the right-hand side of the bold line representing the baseline level two, you can see the percentage of students that scored at intermediate levels and top levels in reading. Your school report also looks at the performance of different groups in your school, breaking down your results by gender or by student socioeconomic background. This information will equip you with important insights about these groups beyond what you can learn by looking at the average scores. For example, figure 3.6 shows how girls and boys perform in reading, mathematics, and science. The diamond represents boys' performance at school Z. You can see that boys from school Z scored 560 points in reading. The square represents girls' performance. Girls from school Z scored 510 points. The green hexagon represents school Z's overall performance in reading. At first glance, this figure seems to suggest that boys perform better than girls at school Z in reading. However, we should not put too much emphasis on this apparent performance gap, as the graph indicates that it is not statistically significantly different. This is shown by the fact that the boxes in the figure are empty. Now let's take a look at school Z's maths performance, which shows that girls scored 525 points, while boys scored 465 points. In this case, you can see that the boxes are filled which means that the performance gap between boys and girls is statistically significant. In the same figure, you can also see school Z's performance in science, as well as how the breakdown by gender compares with that found in country Z, the red dot, and with the OECD average, the blue dot. Several figures in your school report show your school's performance against the backdrop of all the schools that took part in PISA 2018 in your country. This data is displayed in the form of a scatter plot. The vertical axis is the PISA scale. The larger the value, the higher the performance. In this example, we are looking at the PISA scale in reading. The horizontal axis represents the PISA index of economic, social, and cultural status, also called the ESCS index. If you look towards the right-hand side, you can see high positive values, which means that a given school serves more advantaged students. In contrast, towards the left-hand side, the negative value for the ESCS index indicates that a school is serving a disadvantaged student population. The empty blue dots represent all the schools that took part in PISA 2018 in country Z. The green hexagon represents school Z. The horizontal green stripe represents the 95% confidence interval of your school's performance. In other words, all the schools represented by empty blue dots that fall within the horizontal green stripe have a similar performance in reading as school Z. The vertical gray stripe shows the 95% confidence interval of your school's ESCS index. Here too, the blue dots inside the stripe mean that these are schools with a socioeconomic profile similar to school Z. Now you can see 
a black diagonal line on the chart, which is called a regression line. It represents the relationship between socioeconomic background and performance based on data obtained from all the schools that participated in PISA 2018 in Country Z. As you can see, it is slanting upwards from left to right, which indicates that there is a positive relationship between high socioeconomic background and high student performance. This figure gives us a better way of comparing school performance than by simply looking at absolute scores alone. By plotting performance against the ESCS index, we can take into account the socioeconomic background of the student population served when comparing schools. We can learn a lot just from looking at this figure. For example, schools that fall well below the regression line perform lower than what would reasonably be expected given the socioeconomic status of their students. Schools that are placed well above the diagonal line perform better than what would be reasonably expected given the socioeconomic status of the students they serve. If we look at School Z, we can see that some schools, as indicated by the big red circle, obtain similar results but are serving less advantaged students than School Z. Put simply, these schools are beating the odds and achieving performance levels beyond expectations, indicating that other schools like School Z could learn from their professional practice. Now take a look at the dots inside the orange circle. Here we can see that these schools had a lower performance than School Z. These schools serve students with comparable socioeconomic backgrounds to those of School Z. This shows that School Z indeed has done a good job at helping students to achieve higher performance compared to their counterparts serving students with similar backgrounds. School Z should be congratulated for its achievement. In addition to offering comparative measures of student performance, your school report contains a chapter on student voice, which offers important insights based on self-reporting by students themselves. During the assessment, we asked your students several questions drawn from the PISA student questionnaire, which explore their opinions on the overall learning and teaching environments in your school. Figure 4.1 tells us how motivated students from School Z are to learn science. Why is this important? PISA shows that motivation is positively associated with performance. In this figure, you can see how students in your school responded to four questions regarding their motivation to learn science on the left-hand side. The green bars and the hexagon represent the percentage of students at School Z who strongly agree or agree with each statement. For example, 80% of School Z students agree or strongly agree with the statement that studying my science subject is worthwhile for me because it will improve my career prospects. 83% of students from Country Z agreed with the statement, as indicated by the empty diamond. And on average, 66.6% .6 of students in OECD countries agreed or strongly agreed, which is represented by a filled circle. This means that School Z students' responses are not statistically different from Country Z, but they are in relation to OECD countries as that circle is filled. The rest of the figure applies the same logic and provides insights into student perspectives. In addition to generating valuable information on students' cognitive skills, the PISA-based test for skills also delivers insights about their non-cognitive skills, thanks to the inclusion of a subset of questions drawn from a different survey instrument, the OECD study on social and emotional skills. This study draws on the Big Five model, a well-known framework in the field of social and emotional skills that sets out five broad dimensions, emotional regulation, engaging with others, collaboration, task performance, and open-mindedness. Based on student self-reporting in the PISA-based test for schools, we can offer insights into one skill chosen for each of the five dimensions. Figure 5.1 illustrates how the students at School Z compare with all the other schools that took the PISA-based test for schools in Country Z in terms of optimism, assertiveness, empathy, self-control, and curiosity. The results are reported on a nationally standardized scale where higher values indicate higher levels of each skill. For each skill, the figure shows the value for School Z and the average of the bottom 25%, represented by a diamond, mid 50%, represented by a circle, and top 25%, represented by a square, of all schools taking the PISA-based test for schools in Country Z to date. Let's take optimism as an example. School Z, represented by a green hexagon, has a value of 105 based on the nationally standardized scale. The value of the top quartile, as indicated by the square, is 115. 
This suggests that students in School Z are relatively less optimistic than the 25% of the most optimistic students in participating schools in country Z. Now look at the filled diamond. It represents the value of the bottom quartile, or the 25% least optimistic students in participating schools in country Z. As it is filled, it shows that the difference between school Z and the bottom quartile is statistically significant. As its value is smaller than that of school Z, it suggests that students in school Z are more optimistic than the bottom quartile of participating schools. Finally, the circle represents the second and third quartile, and the same approach is followed for the other four social and emotional skills. You should now have a better understanding of how to interpret your school's results. Well, that's great. Now what? Here are some ideas about what you can do next. Follow up action step one. Explore your PISA for Schools report with your school community. Share, explain, and discuss your school results with teachers, parents, students, local education authorities, other schools, and community actors. Share what you've learned from this tutorial with your peers and encourage them to watch it. Check out the Reader's Guide for more in-depth explanations of key concepts used in your school report. Discuss areas for improvement with colleagues and apply the insights gained to design and implement concrete steps for improving teaching and learning in your school. Follow-up action step two, join the PISA for Schools community. Ask questions and share your experience in the PISA for Schools community online at oecdpisaforschools.org and learn from schools around the world. You can ask questions on the community. If you have any questions related to your school report, just go to the community. Our ambassadors, experienced users, and OECD experts will be at your fingertips. Consult our case studies on the community. If you want to learn how other schools analyzed their PISA for Schools results and how they designed and implemented their improvement plans, you can read the community case studies. You can also get in touch with participating schools around the globe via the community. Watch out for our regular activities on the community. We host webinars with school leaders, conduct polls, and organize physical meetings. Watch for updates and get engaged. Share your experience. After you've had a chance to explore your PISA for Schools results and to work with your colleagues to tackle your school's main challenges, how about sharing your experience with other schools? Upload a case study using our standard template you may be invited to discuss your school's insights in a future webinar. Thank you for watching this video. We hope it has been useful for you. Do check out the Reader's Guide for more information and feel free to contact the PISA for Schools team with any questions. We stand ready to support you in your daily efforts to strengthen teaching and learning in your school for the benefit of all your students.